I'm a pretty big fan of my 1970s drill press, but not so much the janky mobile base I built for it out of pallets. The main reason I don't like it, beyond aesthetics and waste of storage space, are these horrible locking casters. If you've ever had to use similar casters, you know the pain of trying to get your foot under there to reach the latch, not to mention having to lock or unlock four individual casters. I fixed all three of these problems by designing and building a new mobile stand for my drill press. The build starts by breaking down three quarter inch plywood at the table saw. All of the parts fit on one four x eight sheet, but I had the friendly folks at the big box home store cut the sheet in half for easier transport and use. Following my plans, which I have available on my website, I marked the location of each piece and its part number with chalk as I sliced off the strips at the table saw. With all of the similar width pieces cut, I could start breaking them down into their individual parts. While I'm doing that, make sure to tap that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you already are a subscriber or a Patreon supporter, thank you very much. The next step was to cut a few dados into the sides of the carcass. I may be alone in this, but I'm not a big fan of dado stacks. Half the time I feel like they're not worth the effort of getting out, switching over, and getting them set up. So I opted just to use the flat kerf blade I already had in my saw and just took multiple passes. The front plate for the lifting mechanism fits into a large rabbit cut on either side of the frame. Using the plate itself as reference and a marking knife, I could accurately mark the material I needed to remove over at the bandsaw. Cutting the square opening in the front plate is pretty quick work with a jigsaw. I should have put painter's tape down to help with tear out, but a file helped clean things up okay. I opted to join almost all the carcass parts together with pocket holes. They're fast, easy, and if done right, well hidden. As you'll see in a minute though, I almost never do things right, but thankfully those screw ups are out of sight. Now the tricky thing I've found with pocket hole assembly is despite your best efforts, the pieces almost always try and move on you. Craig Tools has some nifty things to help with this, but they wouldn't work here, so I got a little creative. Using the front plate as a reference, I propped the carcass sides up and added the back plate to help keep everything square. Then, from the top, I could clamp some scrap pieces of wood in place, essentially locking in the bottom of the carcass. This way, when I drove in the pocket screws, it didn't budge. There was nowhere for it to go. I did the same thing at the back, using the back plate as a brace. Two of the drawer sides were the perfect height, plus one small shim, to hold the top horizontal divider where it needed to be while I drove home the screws. I attached the top cleats by bracing them with a block of wood and a clamp. I could have used Craig Tool's right angle brace, but I forgot I had one. Now, if you ever overdrive your screws like I did, it's a pretty easy fix. Just grind off the tip of the screw, put it back in, then fill the hole with wood putty or a sawdust and glue slurry. The top drawer divider and main support for the drill press is a glue up of two half inch pieces of plywood. So while that's drying, I cut the dado in the top horizontal divider that the drawer divider rests in on the wrong side. You see that green tape there? I even marked the side I needed to cut on and then totally spaced it. But that's not all folks, it gets uglier. I patched the data with a strip of ply and set about cutting the tongue on the top divider and the rabbits for the top cleats. These features do three things. The rabbit lets the weight transfer down from the top through the divider and onto the horizontal divider, while the tongue in the drawer divider locks the divider in place and it creates a groove for the drawer bottoms to slide in. 
if that sounded like a bunch of jumbled words, it'll make sense in a minute. Only problem is, I didn't cut the tongue deep enough before starting the glue up. So off camera, I had to quickly disassemble, deepen the tongue, and reinstall with more glue. Thankfully, it worked. Flipping over the carcass, I installed the front and back plates. With those in place, I could start on the caster mechanism. I can't take full credit for this idea. I first saw this type of system on Walnut Workshop's channel, who in turn got the idea from Carl Holmgren. But I've seen others, like Wesley Treat, recently build something similar, and I modified my version to be a little more low profile. I'll have links to their channels in the description. You should definitely check them out. I centered the strap hinges over the caster plates and kept them an eighth of an inch apart using handy shims. I checked that they operated smoothly and refined the fit with a hand plane where needed. Making sure the casters cleared the frame on all sides, I installed all four casters, then started in on the hardwood pivot cleats. These I cut from miscellaneous scraps I had laying around the shop, before I put a 3 8 inch round over on one edge of all three pieces. After drilling pilot holes, I used scraps and some more shims to position the pivot cleats at the correct height. The goal is to have the casters not being above the frame when fully retracted, and only being exposed about a quarter of an inch above the frame when engaged. This is easy to check with a long piece of scrap. I added some simple cleats to lock in the casters so they don't fall out when the stand is either lifted up or flipped over. This is becoming a recurring theme in this project. I drilled holes in the lever arm before cutting the taper, which is backward. Luckily, there was enough room to remedy this later. So I cut a taper into the lever arm at the bandsaw, refined the angle on the disc sander, and then checked the fit before drilling new holes. Using painter's tape and CA glue, because double-sided tape is too easy, I positioned the lever arm in place and drilled the two holes through the back plate using the lever arm as a guide. A small taper at the front of the lever arm gives it just a hair more travel. I bolted the lever arm in place and secured the hole mechanism so I could finally test it out. and make a bunch of ridiculous noises in my excitement that it worked. Because <laughs> I totally knew it would. Kind of. With that done, I focused on the pedal and locking mechanism. At the bandsaw, I cut little diamond grooves into the top of the pedal to help with traction. If I were to do this again, I would probably just drill a series of holes and glue in some short cut off sections of nails to create a studded and super grippy surface. The locking plate gets glued onto the front plate of the carcass, making sure there's clearance for the pedal to slide underneath it easily. Then, 
two nails create the pins that the pedal slides along. After flushing up any piece that stuck out where it shouldn't, I cut the rabbet for the back panel with one of these nifty adjustable rabbiting bits, then cleared out the rest with a chisel. The back panel gets installed with some small wood screws before the drawer parts are all cut and dimensioned from half inch plywood. These get a small dado cut into them for the drawer bottoms and I constructed them with pocket holes as well, remembering finally that I have a right angle clamp. Since almost all drawer slides have different installation instructions, I can't say much other than I prefer to position the middle of the drawer slide at its correct height, drive in a screw, then pivot either end to match the middle and secure the slide. To match the beach of the lifting arm and its pedal, I cut some trim to go around the top of the stand and applied the pieces with just glue. I also wanted to keep the clean look of the drawers having no pulls or handles, so I opted to carve handholds into the sides of the drawer faces with a router bit. I came back and cleaned up any burning with a Dremel and sandpaper. Installing the top was as easy as driving screws through the top cleats from the front and back. CA glue and handy shims made installing the drawer faces quick and accurate work. With everything done, the only thing left to do is add finish, but I couldn't wait. So I transferred the drill press over to the new car and pulverized the old one. If you like this video, check out my tool chest build for similar content, and in the meantime, on to the next one.